Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at etching a mirror. So I've gotten a lot of questions on the uh, on the channel about this, and so I figured I'd go ahead and do this. So what I've done is I've stopped by Hobby Lobby, and I've picked up some of these 2-inch um, square mirrors. Um, so here's the piece. And... Uh, here's what they look like so they're just regular these are glass mirrors they're not acrylic um, so you can kind of see the sides here and then the back some kind of like uh, clay typically mirrors are um, um, you know a glass with some sort of a luminized coating on the back that's usually atomized on and that's what's what what has created the reflective nature of the mirror now one of the things I want to do though is before we start number one is warning and disclaimer so I'm going to be doing this not looking at this I'm going to be wearing my safety glasses the room is cleared of all pets and people this is a little bit um, dangerous maybe a lot dangerous don't know that's one of the reasons I'm doing it sort of as a little bit of a, a demonstration if you will and uh, so safety is very important so I definitely flash that up here so Anyways, uh, because the piece is that I want to talk about a little bit about light. So I want to do a little bit of an education session about light. So the light that you see being reflected from here back into the camera and from the screen into your eyes is roughly about 350 to 750 nanometers in length. So I'll put a little bit of a display up in the corner here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about and this is the frequency of light that this mirror is reflecting as, as it so different objects reflect at different frequencies so uh, the the pieces is for example these mirrors in here are not your typical mirrors like this because this the beam that this laser generates is an infrared beam so Again, I'll put some in the corner and kind of show you the representation. So you see the where where you have visible light and then you have infrared. Now, the more energetic light is to the blue spectrum or the violet. Violet is the most energetic light down around 350 nanometers, where red is very slow and lumbering, and infrared is even slower. So as I mentioned, you know, red light. For example, the light of this laser is probably around 700 nanometers. To give you an example, the, the beam frequency or length of the wavelength of this beam that will come through this lens is about 10,600 nanometers. So the wavelength is far, far longer. So you can kind of think about it this way. So with a blue or violet light, what's happening is it's, it's sort of like a bunch of small pellets hitting something very rapidly whereas with this beam what's happening in the infrared spectrum is it's a more longer um, uh, more of a sledgehammer effect think of it that way the weight of the beam so the higher the frequency the more energetic the more you get the lower the frequency the less you get but the more and you know more typically absorption you get and that's what's really the key now, I'm not going to go into the physics of, of black body absorption and all that kind of stuff, but there's, there's a lot of physics and math behind all this. But this is one of the reasons that the infrared laser kind of works the way it does, is that longer wavelength is striking the, the body is absorbed and converted to heat uh, very readily versus um, a, a more energetic laser like a violet laser, which may actually reflect... Uh, more of the energy. The energy here is absorbed. And my point is, is I want to see how much is being reflected in the infrared spectrum from this visible light mirror. So one of the things I have also set up is my infrared video camera that will record this in infrared um, as I'm recording it in visible light. Now I'm going to do this with the cover up and again I do not recommend this um, this is not an endorsement of doing this, and I, even with the cover down with the mirror, I would not look inside the case. I would cover up this front piece so it is it is closed because um, you don't want to take any chances. 
is what I'm saying. So just because you think something is some way, do not take chances. Your eyesight is not worth it. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, so again, like I say, the room is cleared of all pets and people. Um, I won't be looking at this. In addition, I'll be wearing safety glasses and I'll be removed from uh, this setup. So let's go ahead. I've got um, something loaded up in laser draw. Actually, it's my logo. So let's go ahead and set all that stuff up and uh, we'll, we'll take a look. Okay, so we have, and sorry a little bit for the audio, I've kind of got to move around here a little bit to make all this happen. So we're now in laser draw, and what we do is we have, uh, we have our logo, and then what I'm going to do is I've got this set to engrave, a speed 150 millimeters per second, and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work to engage the laser, we're going to activate the water pumps and we are going to start our run. Okay, welcome back. So one of the things that did, uh, wow, I ran this at, at 18 uh, milliamps and uh, it, uh, I, I've got the laser deactivated by the way before I reach my hand in here. But, ow, that is hot, 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 hot. Um, but one of the things you see, it actually has cracked the mirror. So, uh, and the etching is way way deep on this so uh, one of the things I'm going to rerun this set at lower so this was at 18 milliamps uh, and it cracked the mirror the mirror is very hot to the touch it actually cracked it in several different if I get it in the frame here uh, it actually cracked it in several different places so uh, I'm going to actually rerun this at a lower one so one of the things we know is uh, 18 is too much. Now, the, the piece is, and I don't know if you can see this, but it is probably etched several thousands of an inch into the glass. It's very deep. Also, it's very coarse to the finger. Uh, again, sorry, trying to keep it in frame here. It's very coarse. It would actually probably cut your any finger. So, de definitely way too much energy. So, let's gear this up. Let's try this with maybe about half the wattage. Uh, again. Okay, so we're back. So I put it in a new mirror. I've uh, lowered the power setting to about 10 milliamps and we're going to do another run based upon 10 milliamps. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so even at uh, 10 milliamps, 100 millimeters, uh, 150 millimeters per second, it still cracked the mirror. So uh, one of the things, but but the the etching is far nicer on this one. Uh, and the interesting part is, is, look at the back. It hasn't burned the back at all uh, of the mirror. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try adjusting it up, doubling 
the speed. Also, for some reason, in typical fashion, it's kind of moved itself over. It's one one of the things I've sort of noticed about this. If you don't reset the um, laser, it kind of wants to edge things over. So, anyways, I'm going to uh, let's go ahead and do this one more time. But this time, I'm going to increase it to 300 and see if we can stop the mirror from uh, cracking, but keep it at about um, 10 milliwatts. So here we are back again. Uh, unfortunately, this cracked at the very end. So even at 300 at 10 milliamps uh, seems to be a little bit much to to make this a go. So uh, I think either I'm going to have to crank down the power a little bit or crank up the speed. I don't want to go any higher than speed, so I am going to cut the power down uh, probably from 10 to about, uh, let me get this more down in the frame, 10 to about 8 milliamps. So let's go ahead and give that one a shot. Okay, <clears throat> so here we are back. Um, seemed roughly seven did the trick. So this was done at about uh, seven milliampere, so way at the low end of the power spectrum, or at least relatively for this 40 watt laser. Uh, as you can see in the back, nothing here. Even if I go back to the, um, uh, let's see here. See, this is the 18 uh, milliamp, so basically full power. Nothing on the back has been even scored. Now, the, the, the uh, engraving is a little bit deeper, but nothing on the back is scored. So, the glass is, is stopping and absorbing this light, and this is one of the reasons I had the discussion about light at the start of this um, video, is how this actually works is when that long wavelength hits this glass, it's absorbed by the glass very rapidly and, and changed into heat. And this is what's doing the etching now. This is actually very nice. So I've done this at 300 um, millimeters a second, uh, 7 uh, milliamperes, and this has come out pretty good. So one of the things, I haven't looked at the reflection videos, obviously, as, as I said, I, I, I was separated from the machine it's, it's running this for safety purposes so I'm going to take a look at those and then I tell you what let's meet back at the bench and take a, a little bit deeper look at this okay welcome back so we've uh, gone through we have printed four and tested out the different uh, powers and feed rates so uh, I think as you saw in the video 18 milliampers at 150 definitely didn't work uh, 10 milliampers 150 didn't work. 10 milliampers at 300 even didn't work. We doubled the speed. So we actually had to go down to about 7 milliamps and about 300 millimeters per second. And uh, what I did is I printed a second one just to make sure that uh, you know everything was kosher with that and it was. So it actually worked out pretty good. Now one of the things that I do want to uh, do want to do, I got a problem with that do want to do. Uh, anyways, um, what I am going to do is place uh, an overlay because one of the things I wanted to take, um, first of all, one of the things you're seeing is an overlay of this under the USB microscope, the uh, 18 milliamperes by 150 milliseconds. I want you to see the surface of the, what you're looking at is the surface of this three up here. 
and you can see how the laser has actually fractured the surface of the glass which is really interesting to see because I think one of the things is you're messing around with this understanding what the laser actually does to the glass surface is very interesting so it's, it's, it's basically re-annealing um, the surface. The other thing I want to do is I'm not going to cut over and I'm going to flip it on its side so you're going to look at it on its uh, edge sort of like this and one of the things I want I want to uh, point out a couple of different pieces as you're looking at this you know number one look how deep it's etched into the glass um, as I mentioned it's probably a couple thousands into the glass so uh, uh, I, I found that kind of interesting because uh, the other piece is as I mentioned before it has not gone through to the back side you can see the um, the back side, the, the, the atomized aluminum or whatever they're using for reflective coating, you know, really hasn't been scored. There's no real impact marks in that. So the, the surface of the glass really has absorbed uh, the bulk of the light. And the remainder of the light has been reflected off the mirroring on the back. And that's one of the things that you probably noticed from the uh, uh, inset that I did with the the uh, near IR camera is there is a lot of reflection actually a little bit more reflection than I thought in the uh, far near to far infrared spectrum so again huge safety issue there if you're going to be um, etching mirrors uh, I would definitely um, uh, cover up the top you know make sure the case is closed and also cover up the top opening now I mean technically at, at around seven there should be enough absorption in the mirror and the acrylic covering of the laser probably to get most of it and then wearing safety glasses but I'm gonna say just for safety sake I would I would mask that out and so you don't get any reflective light outside of the container because especially at the higher powers if you're going to do a heavier glass or something like that there was a lot of reflection so my two cents I would not you know uh, let that escape the case um, just my two cents um, but definitely the seven seven uh, milliampere's at 300 worked very well very happy with it repeatable product so uh, turned out very well so anyways I, I hope this was interesting to you guys uh, I know I had a lot of requests about etching mirrors how how do you etch a mirror there was some discussion that you know does the laser actually burn the mirroring compound and that kind of stuff the answer is at least with a co2 laser no it doesn't burn it it actually re-anneals the glass or melts the glass and lets the glass you know reset itself and that's what creates this frosted look and again you can see that in the the microscope pictures that i had added um again now I, this this will not work with a visible light laser so if you have you know something in the visible light range of three four five hundred you know one of those uh, you know violet or purple lasers do not do this because it will be basically a hundred percent reflective so uh, uh, this you can only do with a co2 laser and again that's why I kind of went at the beginning of this and discussed the different frequencies of light and things like that so hey if you found this interesting give me a thumbs up um, and second thing subscribe to the channel a lot more of this coming and if you have questions hit me up below always happy to answer them so cheers and we'll see you in the next video Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.